Kelsey. This is my channel, The Fancy Hat Lady Reads. I'm wearing one of my fancy booktube hats, and today I am doing a book haul for the months of May and June. Uh, May was the month that towards the end of it I moved into this apartment. I got these new bookshelves. I was like, woohoo, I have bookshelves. I can buy books again. And I, I maybe went a little bit overboard given that I don't actually have a lot of like empty space on these bookshelves. But this was also a period of a couple of months when some of my most anticipated releases of the year were released and I bought some of those. And also, uh, you know, I went thrift store shopping for some things for the apartment and bought books instead, uh, that sort of thing. So this is a mix of some planned purchases and some impulse purchases. I'm going to start, I guess, with the most planned purchases, which were things that I either pre-ordered or went out like hunting for once I knew they were released. The pre-order of this batch is actually my most recently acquired book. This came in the mail yesterday and I was like, yes, this is this is the last of the books I'm acquiring before the end of the month. This is the one I was waiting for so I could film the book haul. And that is The Witness for the Dead by Catherine Addison, which is the companion novel set in the same world as the Goblin Emperor. I sort of vowed in my anticipated releases video for the first half of the year that like when this was released I would reread The Goblin Emperor in time to read this. I, I still want to do that. Um, however, I'm not going to start rereading The Goblin Emperor until the translatathon is done. I know this is a standalone story but there is so much rich world building in this world and that I do want to remind myself what it is that, you know, we do already know about this world. But I also think the protagonist of this book is uh, someone who was a minor character in The Goblin Emperor and I want to remind myself what we already know about him. This is sort of shorter than I was expecting it to be. It's not very long. Um, so I, I don't know how I feel about that. I guess I'm both happy that it'll be a quick read given that my reading has been very sporadic of late, but also, man, I was, I was kind of hoping for something more meaty. I don't know. We'll see how I feel about it. And then the two that I spent a lot of time over the last month, like, hunting down in bookstores because I'm, I'm going shopping in real stores again because I'm vaccinated, woohoo! Um, I went to a bunch of different bookstores looking for these two books and it took me forever to find them at two different stores. The first that I was surprised it took so long to find was Fugitive Telemetry, the new Murderbot novella by Martha Wells. This I have already read. I, I read it as soon as I got it. The Murderbot books are like that for me. I, I will read it as soon as I have it in my hands and nothing can stop me. This novella is set um, chronologically prior to Network Effect, which was the novel and the previous book in this series. You can totally read them in either order. This is something of a uh, side story to the main plot of the Murderbot series. This fills in a sort of gap in time in the pre-existing chronology, and it's basically Murderbot solves a murder mystery. And then the other one I had to really look for in a bunch of stores was Chaos on Catnet by Naomi Kritzer. This is the sequel to Catfishing on Catnet, which is a young adult near future sci-fi novel that is uh, a favorite of mine. I'm really looking forward to getting to the sequel. Um, this is another one I'll probably be picking up pretty soon after the end of the Translatathon, which is uh, the reason I am reading the book that I am currently reading. I expect this to be a page turner like the first one was. The first one kept me up all night uh, reading it and that was, uh, you know, an experience I hadn't had in a long time. So those were the three that I either pre-ordered or was hunting for as soon as they were released. And then my other very hotly anticipated new release that I bought new from a bookstore is Soul Star by C.L. Polk. This is the third and final book in the Kingston cycle. You may remember in a recent wrap up I talked about Storm Song, which was book two, and how I absolutely loved it but wished I had I had read it closer back to back with 
Witchmark, the first book, and so obviously I really want to not repeat my mistake. I want to read this fairly soon after reading Storm Song because I want to remember everything that's going through this story. I picked this up though sort of impulsively. I was shopping at the time at a Barnes and Noble for birthday gifts for someone else, um, and I, I got those books but then I also had to grab one for me. And then the other new books I purchased just this month um, were under a more, a more impulsive book buying circumstance, but nevertheless there are a couple hotly anticipated titles for me in this batch. Um, so the circumstance was that uh, Books of Wonder, which is a uh, children's bookstore here in New York City, announced that they have to close their location on the Upper West Side because their landlord has like sold the building and they have to move out. Um, so they're looking to find a new location uh, for their Upper West Side store, but they have to close that current location, and so they were having a store-wide 20% off sale at that location, um, which I had actually never been to before because I usually go to their downtown location that's on, like, 17th Street, I think. But I made, I made the journey to the Upper West Side to, uh, buy some kids titles, some middle grade and YA books. I was really excited to see that they had my my other very very anticipated new release of the first half of the year which was The Tea Dragon Tapestry by Kay O'Neill. This is the third book in the Tea Dragon graphic novel series. They're very pretty. I love them a lot. I've talked I've talked about these books a lot. Um, this is going to be the conclusion of the trilogy. We're going back to the characters from book one. And so then the more impulsive thing that I did was I also bought a hardcover copy of the first book because I got this one from the library. I didn't own it and I do sort of want to reread it before reading book three. I remember what happened in the Tea Dragon Festival, which was book two. I own an ARC copy of that, which is not full-sized like these hardcovers, um, and it is missing a little bit of extra material that was in the finished version. But I do technically own a copy of, of book two, but I, I didn't own book one. So eventually I might like to round out my ownership of this trilogy by getting a finished hardcover of book two, but that's not a super high priority for me. Um, I do want to reread this one before I read this one though. I do want to point out that this one, The Tea Dragon Tapestry, is significantly longer than the first one. I don't know if you can see that very well, um, but this is, this is thicker and I'm excited about it. And then I also wanted to pick up some YA books while I was there and everything was on sale. And so I grabbed another one of my anticipated releases which was The Mirror Season by Anna Marie McLemore. This uh, was one that I, I didn't actually pre-order because I still haven't read their previous novel Dark and Deepest Red and I do want to commit to reading that one before I read the new one. But Anna Marie McLemore is one of my favorite YA uh, writers. They write young adult standalone, very um, beautifully written magical realism and fairy tale-ish books. This one I know is inspired by the Snow Queen and deals with some heavy topics about sexual assault. Um, it also has queer characters. I'm not a hundred percent certain what sort of uh, representation is in this, but I will obviously let you know when I read it. And then the other YA book I grabbed was a total impulse purchase because this was a book that I I knew about, but I, I think I must have been getting it confused with another book because I read the description of this and it is not at all what I thought it was. <laughs> This is The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan He, who is the author previously of Descendant of the Crane, which is a book that I've had on my Kindle for a really long time, um, and I really wanted to read that book. It's a fantasy novel, and I've heard nothing but glowing good things about it. I think there was... There was some sort of kerfuffle uh, where that book had to be pulled from its original... Um, 
American publisher, but I do think it's found a new publisher and I think it's back in print. Anyways, I've always known I wanted to read that book, but this one hadn't caught my attention because I was under the misconception that this was a contemporary YA novel. Um, it is not. It is science fiction. I misunderstood. This looks like it might have some elements of like climate fiction in it. It's about two sisters, one of whom wakes up like on a desert island with no memories, and the other one who is a scientist. This looks really like mysterious and intriguing and it looks very original. Um, so after reading the description I decided I was gonna impulse buy this. I do still want to read Descendant of the Crane first, but you never know, things might happen. Like maybe after I finish reading Chaos on Capnet I will want nothing more than to read more interesting YA science fiction. That's totally a possibility. The two that I bought while ostensibly thrift store shopping for things for my apartment are these two, um, Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia and The Wonderling by Mira Bartok. So Mexican Gothic, wildly popular book, horror novel, by an author I know I really like. Many people I know who are also wimps about horror have read this book and liked it. I am cautiously optimistic. I've talked before about how my seasonal reading moods are sometimes like counter seasonal, specifically when it comes to spooky books, because everyone does like their spooky book readathons and TBRs and things in October because like ooh that's the spooky season but because I am a wimp about spooky things and I think for a number of other personal reasons my best season for reading spooky books is the summer when it is bright and sunny and warm and the world feels good. That's when I'm like feeling okay enough that I can venture into the spooky feels in my fiction reading. So this was the beginning of the summer. I was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe this summer I will read Mexican Gothic. And so when I saw a used copy of it in a thrift store, I bought it. And then uh, The Wonderling by Mira Bartok is a middle grade novel that I had out from the library for a really long time, back when it was first released. This was 2017, um, so maybe 2017 or like 2018 or, or something. For a while I had this book out from the library and I never got around to it. I ended up returning it unread and I've always been sort of sad about that but like never enough to you know put a library hold on it again. I've sort of learned that when I have impulse library borrowing going on. I often never get around to those books. I own so many books I can impulse read that um, I'm most likely to actually pick up and read a library book before I have to return it if it's something that like I really want to read for a specific reason. So I sort of felt like I was never going to actually read this book unless I bought a copy. So I got this for five dollars. This is a fantasy novel with characters who are sort of human-animal hybrids and it looks extremely whimsical. It has some very lovely illustrations. I think the author did the illustrations for this herself. Um, and it just seems like the type of middle grade I'll really like if I actually get around to reading it. And then the last two books both came from the same used bookstore. From this used bookstore I have one book that I bought for one dollar and one book that I bought for just a, a few dollars discounted from list price. My one dollar book purchase is Ammonite by Nicola Griffith, which is a feminist science fiction novel that I have been aware of for years. It's sort of been one of those books that, oh, if I see it cheap at a used bookstore, I'll buy it. I saw it cheap at a used bookstore. I bought it. And then the other book that I actually paid like $16 for, which is not that much less than list price for this book, is a book that I actually probably would have bought full price if I didn't stumble upon a used copy of it anyways. This is the sequel to the book I am currently reading. This is The Beast Warrior by Nahoko Uehashi. I am reading The Beast Player for the Translate-a-thon. I'm in the middle of it. It's good. So my understanding of this series is that The Beast Player contains one full story arc, which is two books of the published Japanese series, but that that's 
that's a complete story arc and that this is the second story arc two more books but they take place some years later and as i said i'm liking the first book enough that i'm gonna want to have the sequel so i bought it even though i do think this is a slightly unreasonable price for a used copy it's in good condition it's worth it it's fine. <laughs> I do also love the covers of these and I think they look really pretty together. They have good illustrated spines, like this is gonna be a good pair to have. I'm happy about this. Anyhow, that is the book haul for the last two months. Um, maybe I'll cool down my book buying a bit now. Let me know if you've read any of these books or if you're also excited about any of these new releases. I hope you're having a nice day. That is all. Bye for now. <laughs>